But now I think he has appealing redraft leagues with the general manager coming out saying we think he's going to have 2020 impact on the big league club. That tells me he will be up sooner than later. They're going to limit his innings, sure. But they want to get him acclimated to the major leagues, it appears. He throws 98 to 102. Are you kidding me? Triple-digit fastball from a starter? And he is slated to pitch today at 107 against the Yankees at Dunedin, Florida. You don't think I'm going to tune into that one? First of all, I'm a Yankee fan. You know that. But I'm a huge baseball fan. And Nate Pearson is pitching against arguably one of the best teams in the American League. Now, he's not going to face Yankee starters one through nine. I got that. But let's see how he pitches. He probably ain't going to pitch an inning, maybe two at the most. But the Blue Jays are throwing him out there. Remember my mantra, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. And Pearson is going to get that opportunity starting today at home in Dunning, Florida, in a spring training game against the New York Yankees. Wow. Remember, we've talked on previous shows about Nolan Jones, Cleveland Indian third base prospect. The Indians already have invited Nolan to Major League Spring Training. Nolan underwent thumb surgery in late October, but he is reportedly ahead of schedule in his rehab. And he's 21 years old, and he is their top prospect. And he should be owned in all dynasty leagues, and he may not be a bad stash in AL only this year. Now, will he make his debut in 2020? That can depend on a lot of things. But let me tell you a little bit about Nolan Jones, because I've met the kid. Played at high A Carolina League for a portion of last season. Before the game, he stops, he talks to people like me, he signs autographs from people like me, he talks baseball's cards, it doesn't matter. He's engaging, he cares about the sport, he cares about the fans. A lost talent some of the days around Major League Baseball, you can rest assured. But what most impressed me about Nolan Jones, after watching him play and he the game, one of the games I went to, he hit really well as a night game. There were fireworks after the game. Players were rushing off the field to get to the clubhouse. And there was this group of kids, maybe three or four. And you could tell by the looks of the kids, they were not the most privileged kids you've ever seen. Okay? Nolan Jones not only stops. I watched this. I was like three feet away. But he stops. He gives away his bats, and those are sacred cows, to these underprivileged kids. It was a moment. It was a moment that this podcaster will not forget. I can't wait to see Nolan Jones. I tell you what, even if he played for the Red Sox, when he comes to bat in the major leagues, I'm pulling for this kid. That's what baseball should be about, you see? It should be about, and we. And, and the first time I ever had a conversation with Lenny Melanie, when before I ever did my first podcast, we had a heart-to-heart conversation. And what Lenny impressed on me and what he wanted with this network and has are people, number one, who care about each other, and second, people who are passionate about baseball. But remember, the human comes before the sport. And that's the case on this network. And when you see a player like Nolan Jones combine the human with the sport, it's an incredible day. Keep your eye on Nolan Jones. I got a good feeling about him. Another player I got a good feeling about after yesterday. Remember I told you that Mike Soroka, he was feeling a growing pain. 
And I don't mean G-R-O-W-I-N-G. I mean G-R-O-I-N, pain. Well, good news for Mike Soroka, because I was I was advertising King Felix yesterday because you never know with these injuries. And I'm sure Atlanta signed King Felix as pure insurance, an insurance policy. And with Soroka going down and Hamels going down, oh my gosh. But good news for Soroka, the 22-year-old Canadian tossed an inning of live BP on Monday, said he felt good, that he felt really good. He will likely now make his next Grapefruit Scheduled League debut start. And he is supposed to be the ace of the Braves rotation. 2019, what did he do? He went 13-4. He had a 2.68 ERA. And he had 41 walks to 142 strikeouts. That's like three and a half to one. I'll take that, right? So Soroka, it appears not really injured that much. He'll be pitching. A player who might miss his next Grapefruit League start, though, is Pittsburgh Pirates starting pitcher, former Tampa Bay Ray great Chris Archer. Scratched from his... Grapefruit League start on Monday against the Yankees due to neck tightness. Not a good way to start spring. Now remember, last year, Archer, horrible statistics. Remember, he's traded over from Tampa to Pittsburgh and Glass now and others, Tommy Pham, not Tommy Pham, Tommy Pham in St. Louis, but Glass now and others, Go over to Tampa from Pittsburgh. Austin Meadows is who I meant to say, not Tommy Pham. I knew better than that. Austin Meadows and Glassnow, and there's another minor league who could be better than any of them. Go over to Tampa for Chris Archer. I, I, I still just, I, I have to say that one over and over, even believe it really ever happened. Talk about a fantasy trade. Anyway, last year Archer was horrible. Three and nine. Career high, you ready? Ready for this? Because I'm a numbers guy. 5.19 ERA, 1.41 whip, 143 strikeouts in 119 and two-thirds innings, but he also had 55 walks. So the Pirates trying to be cautious with him. Now he comes down with this sore neck. He's never been a good pitcher in Pittsburgh. Now, Undeniably, he was a really good pitcher for a while in Tampa, but he hasn't been good in Pittsburgh. Former two-time All-Star with the Rays, will he be drafted? I, I mean that seriously. Will he be drafted or not? Maybe late round at best? But this neck injury or soreness Sure isn't helping his cause much. Another injury. It seems like that's what we talk about in spring training. Players getting injured. How about swinging a Oakland Athletic outfielder, Stephen Piscotti? Hip. Oblique. Said he's dealing with something now going on in his left side. And he won't be able to play until later this month. Now, he should have time to get ready for opening day for the A's. But how many times have we seen oblique, these oblique side injuries, sidelining players much longer than originally anticipated? And most of the time it's because players try to come back too soon and they re-injure themselves. So a close eye will be placed on Piscotti by Oakland. He's 29. Last year, with injuries, remember, Injuries are nothing new to Piscotti. He only played in 93 games last year, hit 250, 13 homers, 44 RBIs. That's a disappointing season. In 2018, he hit 27 homers. Now, I think his ceiling is also limited due to the ballpark, the home ballpark factor playing in Oakland. And if there's ever been a pitcher-friendly park, it's got to be the Oakland Coliseum. So here's Piscotti. He's injured already. 
Oakland, I'm sure, will take their time with their star. And we'll see how that goes. Now, some good news out of Cleveland, not injury-related, but Fran Mel Reyes. A few years ago, I was reading about Fran Mel Reyes and how he was, you know, moidoing the ball at at minor leagues. And so I was at a baseball card show one weekend, and they had three autographed rookie cards of Fran Mel Reyes, and they were selling for $5 a piece. And I thought... <laughs> I've wasted more than 15 bucks. Let's take a shot on the Fran Mill. So I bought three autograph cards by the Fran Mill. Well, yesterday he homered in his first Cactus League game. That was Sunday, rather. He homered in his first Cactus League game. The Indians won 9-5. to five, And Reyes, remarkably, has lost about 20 pounds since the end of last year. Remember, he was in the trade from San Diego in the three-way deal that sent Trevor Bauer, Andrea's number one pitcher in all the land, to Cincinnati. Fran Mel's 24, massive power. He hit 43 home runs in his first 186 career big league games. Ended 2019 hitting 10 homers for the Indians. And he shows tremendous power, and now he's lost 20 pounds. He's going to give you a lot of strikeouts. He's probably going to hit 240, 250. He's a Chris Davis type player, actually, with a little more power. So I think his power, like Chris Davis with a K, can be relatively cheap. I think he's going to hit 35 to 40 bombs, if not more. And he's coming into camp in the best shape he's been in in a while. So I'm looking for Fran Mel to be a bargain draft pick. We'll see how that all works. Let's talk about some more injuries. Aaron Judge for the Yankees progressing with this short, short with his sore shoulder. Jordan Montgomery coming along slowly but surely. And Jordan Montgomery could well be a big piece in the New York Yankee puzzle this year. And while we're talking about the Yankees, and and let's finish Jordan Montgomery first, because I want to talk about the starter. I think that's really important. Jordan Montgomery came in in the second inning behind Garrett Cole, and Jordan Montgomery hurled two innings without permitting a run or a hit, walking one and striking out three. Following Yankee newly signed ace Garrett Cole, who started the game and struck out two batters yesterday or last night. The game ends in a 3-3 tie. I'm not so interested in results as I am who pitched. And Jordan Montgomery, folks, he could be a big piece to this Yankee team, especially due to the fact that Severino has this forearm issue, and who knows what the status will be there. But when you get Montgomery coming in, throwing two innings, and and let's look at what he did here. Let's look at the batters faced. Uh, You got Cole came in, pitched to four hitters. Montgomery pitched two innings, faced eight hitters. So equal number of batters for each pitcher. Both look very dominant in their pitching on Monday night against the Pirates. Now, I know they were playing a team. The lineup was Adam Frazier, Brian Reynolds, Tucker at short, Bell. But the top four hitters for Pittsburgh got no hits, none, and you could mix in some strikeouts. Frazier struck out once. Reynolds struck out twice. Tucker struck out. No, Tucker did not strike out. Sorry. Bell struck out. All told, the Pittsburgh Pirates against Yankee pitchers struck out 14 times. And I look for Yankee pitchers to be that kind of pitcher this year, where there are lots of strikeouts. Power pitchers. Now, Montgomery, more crafty than powerful. But I think he is really going to be a big piece to the puzzle for the Yankees this season. I want to take a look at the chat room this morning. Boy, we're loaded up. Corona Cyclonus, Chris Gallo. Good morning. DK Louche, George, 
King Hop, Lenny from Long Island, Phil Chaplin, of course, SP.